Hello and welcome to our final video of this unit. In this video, what we're going to be discussing is cellular respiration, or how organisms can go ahead and break down the sugar, glucose, to make usable forms of energy for the body. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. Be prepared. This one's a bit of a doozy, but if you are patient, you work your way through it step by step, and you give it your best shot, you will make it through this. That much I can promise. So, let's go ahead and get this process started. So, respiration is the biochemical process that makes ATP from glucose. Now, this occurs in both autotrophs and heterotrophs. This occurs in any organism that has a mitochondria. And there are two primary types of respiration. We have both aerobic and anaerobic. And they're carried out by, like we said, both plants and animals, autotrophs and heterotrophs. We'll be discussing both aerobic and anaerobic as we go through, but we'll be starting off with aerobic. So aerobic respiration requires oxygen to go ahead and release energy. And it has pre, uh, three primary steps. It starts off with the process of glycolysis, then moves to the Krebs cycle, and finishes up inside the electron transport chain. The chemical equation for aerobic respiration is as follows. So, we have C6H12O6, which if you recall, is glucose, plus 6 CO, uh, sorry, 6O2. So that means our reactants are glucose and oxygen. At the end of the process, our products are 6H2O, so 6 molecules of water, 6 molecules of CO2, so 6 molecules of carbon dioxide, and a net gain of 36 molecules of ATP, or usable energy. So... Let's go ahead and start this off. Now, both aerobic and anaerobic respiration start with the same process, which is called glycolysis. Glycolysis occurs inside the cytoplasm. The chemical equation for glycolysis is as follows. So, we start off with glucose, C6H12O6, and we want to go ahead and break this apart because glyco, uh, glyco and lysis, which make up glycolysis, simply just mean to split the sugar. Now, considering that we are breaking bonds, we actually have to go ahead and put energy in to get this to happen. So we're gonna put two ATP in to break the uh, glucose. And once we have efficiently broken up the glucose, we get two molecules of what is known as pyruvic acid and four molecules of ATP. So the steps. Step one, glucose is broken into two pyruvic acid using two ATP. So we put two ATP in to break apart the glucose and make two molecules of pyruvic acid. Now, four ATP molecules are released from this process, giving us a net gain of two ATP. Because if you think about it, we went ahead and we put two ATP in to begin with, right? So we were negative two. And we just got four ATP out of the deal. So that gives us a positive 2. So we have a net gain of 2 ATP. So by the time glycolysis is over, we have 2 molecules of pyruvic acid and a net gain of 2 ATP. All right. So up next, we're going to go ahead and go from the cytoplasm and move into the mitochondria. The Krebs cycle, or step 2 in aerobic respiration, is as follows. This occurs inside the mitochondria which is known for going ahead and creating all the power for the cell. The steps in the Krebs cycle are as follows. We go ahead and take the pyruvic acid and convert it into a molecule known as acetyl-CoA. Now going ahead and converting this releases two molecules of CO2, which we're going to go ahead and use in a little bit. So pyruvic acid is converted into acetyl-CoA, and this process releases two molecules of carbon dioxide. Step two is the acetyl-CoA is then broken down into the following. It's broken down into hydrogen, four molecules of CO2, and two ATP. Remember, anytime we go ahead and break something down, ATP is often released. So from here, this CO2 is going to be released, and this happens every time we exhale. So if you ever wondered where that CO2 came from, now you know. Finally, the hydrogen ions that came from the broken down acetyl-CoA are going to bond to carrier molecules, NAD, uh, sorry, NAD plus and FAD, to make the carrier molecules NADH and FADH2. 
So these two molecules, NADH and FADH2, will be used in the next set of reactions, in the, uh, which is the final set of aerobic respiration. So at the end of this process, we have NADH, FADH2, CO2, and two molecules of ATP. <laughs> I know it's a bit. Hang in there. The final step is called the electron transport chain, or the ETC for short. This also occurs inside the mitochondria. The steps in the electron transport chain start off with NADH and FADH2 being exchanged for ATP. So there is a exchange value here. You go ahead and you trade in the NADH, it goes through the electron transport chain, and it kicks out ATP. And the same deal happens with FADH2. FADH2 enters the electron transport chain, and ATP is produced from the reaction. Now this process does go ahead and release water as a byproduct. From here, this process releases roughly 32 molecules of ATP. And if we go ahead and combine that with the two we made from the Krebs cycle and the two we made from glycolysis, the end result of aerobic respiration is 36 molecules of ATP. Like we said, we got two molecules from glycolysis, two molecules from the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain gave us roughly 32. So if you go ahead and take a look at it, the whole process gives us a net gain of roughly 36 molecules of ATP. Now we discussed aerobic respiration. Let's go ahead and look at the other side of the coin, which is anaerobic. Now anaerobic respiration does not need oxygen. It's also known as fermentation. This process occurs entirely in the cytoplasm. It never makes it to the mitochondria. And it only has two steps as opposed to the three found in aerobic. From here, it enters glycolysis first, and then will either go through alcoholic or lactic acid fermentation, depending on the type of cell you're dealing with. Now these can be uh, used to create a wide variety of different products such as wine, cheese, and even bread. So, lactic acid fermentation occurs in animal cells, and this converts pyruvic acid into lactic acid and carbon dioxide. Now, lactic acid can go ahead and build up in your muscles when they run out of oxygen. This is what goes ahead and causes muscle soreness. So if you've ever been exercising a bit too much and your muscles start to get sore and potentially give out, this is the cause. Your muscles aren't getting enough energy because you're not getting enough oxygen into your body. The other type is called alcoholic fermentation, and this converts pyruvic acid into ethanol and carbon dioxide, which is used to create alcohol. Now this process is not carried out by animal cells. This process is carried out by plant cells and most forms of bacteria. It probably wouldn't be a good thing if animal cells could go ahead and produce alcohol. That could lead to some pretty awkward situations. And this process is used to make, like we said earlier, wine, beer, cheese, and bread. So both processes result in the production of only two molecules of ATP. And where did these two come from? These two molecules of ATP came from glycolysis. So the act of fermentation doesn't actually produce any ATP at all. And as you can see, this doesn't go ahead and produce enough uh, energy for the body to be maintained. So if you continue to go ahead and exercise or work out or do whatever it is you're doing while your body's going through this, your body's eventually going to shut down. So factors affecting respiration. The only factor that affects cell respiration is the current concentration of ATP. The more ATP molecules available, the slower the rate of respiration because your body already has a surplus of it. It doesn't need to create more. Now from here, you have one of two options. You can either go ahead and back out and leave the video right now. That's your decision. Or on the next three slides, we're going to be going ahead and doing a brief overview of aerobic respiration, anaerobic respiration, and an overview of the entire process. So if you feel you need it, and personally, I would highly recommend giving it a look. If for no other reason than to go ahead and take a look at it. But if you really feel like you're good to go, take care. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started on the last three. So, a summary of aerobic respiration. The first step we have is glycolysis, which occurs in the cytoplasm. 
The reactants for this process are glucose and two molecules of ATP. What is produced here are two molecules of pyruvic acid and four ATP, giving us a plus two net gain overall. The next step is the Krebs cycle. So the Krebs cycle occurs inside the mitochondria. So before this whole process gets started, remember, pyruvic acid is, got, is uh, converted into acetyl-CoA, and this is what goes into the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle produces CO2, two molecules of ATP, and the energy carriers NADH and FADH2. The next step and final step in the process is the electron transport chain, and this also occurs inside the mitochondria. Here, our reactants are NADH and FADH2, and these molecules are exchanged for roughly 32 molecules of ATP. Water is also released during this process. So the total net gain of aerobic respiration is roughly 36 molecules of ATP. Now that's aerobic. Let's go ahead and hit anaerobic as well. So anaerobic respiration. The first step is glycolysis. Remember glycolysis occurs inside the cytoplasm. The reactants are glucose and 2 ATP. It produces 2 pyruvic acid as well as a net gain of 2 ATP. From here, if it's an animal cell, it will go through lactic acid fermentation which occurs inside the cytoplasm. The reactants are 2 pyruvic acid, and the products are lactic acid and carbon dioxide. If it's a plant cell, it will then go through alcoholic fermentation, which once again occurs inside the cytoplasm. The reactants are 2 molecules of pyruvic acid, and the products are ethanol and CO2. So the total net gain of anaerobic respiration is 2 ATP. And this right here just gives you one last look at the whole process. So remember, we start off with glucose. It is broken down through the process of glycolysis, giving us 2 ATP. From here, it can go into the Krebs cycle, if there's oxygen present. And the Krebs cycle releases CO2, and also produces two more molecules of ATP. The final section is the electron transport chain, which gives us 32 molecules of ATP. So the end result, sorry, it also gives us uh, water, don't forget about that. So the end result is 36 ATP total if it goes through aerobic. Now, if it does not go through aerobic and no oxygen is present, from glycolysis it will then lead into fermentation. And from here, it is going to go ahead and either produce alcohol or lactic acid depending on what you're looking at. And this will only give us a net gain of 2 ATP total. And remember, this is anaerobic. All right, now I know this video was long, and if you went ahead and survived the whole thing, my hat is definitely off to you for doing that. So, this was a lot of information to go ahead and swallow at one time. So, if you have any questions, any at all, I highly encourage you to go ahead and talk to your instructor. They will definitely help break this down for you if you need it. Now... Go ahead, give your, wrist a a, uh, give your wrist a break. You went ahead, put a lot of work in on this one. Nice job for making it to the end. Thank you very much for your time. And until the next video, you go ahead and take care of yourself. And I'll see you then.